Hey guys, it's Ryan. This is a low light comparison between the Sony A6000, A6400, and the original A7S. I'm using the A7S as a benchmark since it's one of the best, if not the best, mirrorless or DSLR cameras in low light situations. So I filmed in intervals of 10 seconds at different ISOs all the way from 100 up to, you know, 400 and some thousand on the A7S. Obviously the A6400 and A6000 don't go that high, um, but I indicated that on the when we top out on those cameras. At these low ISOs, all three of these cameras really, just the image looks really good. Um, filmed this in 1080p. Obviously, the A6000 doesn't shoot in 4K. The A7S will output UHD um, to an external recorder like a, like a Ninja. And the A6400 is the only one of these three cameras that will um, film UHD or 4K internally. You know, at ISO 1250, we're starting to see some noise in the background of the A6000. The A6400, you know, a little bit of noise, but it's, it's looking pretty good. Uh, A7S is still very clean. Definitely starting to see some noise a6000 and ISO 1600. I love all three of these cameras, honestly, um, and they all have different strengths and weaknesses. You know, getting up into ISO 2000, 3200, we're really starting to get to the top end of the usable range, in my opinion, of the A6000. A6400 still doing great, and the A7S has been, it is a beast in low light, and it is just fine at, at even up 6400 and higher. Um, the A6000, you can get it used. It came out in 2014. You can get it used on eBay for a pretty decent one, I think, for around 300 bucks. The A7S, same thing, came out the same year. Um, you can get it used on eBay for maybe five or $600. And the A6400 came out in 2019, and it's uh, the body, I believe, is around $900. ISO 10,000, obviously the A6... The A6000 is completely unusable, and we're at, we've maxed out at 12,800. The uh, A6400 is getting to the point where it's really, I don't think, usable. Um, and it's got a ways to go as far as its ISO capability. And now up into 12,000, 16,000, 20,000, we're really starting to see some noise in the A7S. But uh, I, I've used it for live events uh, all the way up to 20,000. Um, and not had to do any uh, denoising, you know, in, in post, and it's it's done just fine. Much over twenty thousand, you really need to have some kind of a denoise, a denoiser like a Red Giant's denoiser. Or there are some others as well. Thirty-two thousand, the A sixty-four hundred maxes out, and then we're just going to watch the the A seven S as it gets noisier, and noisier, all up all the way up to four hundred, four hundred thousand, and some. You know, there are four basic things that affect exposure if you're you know, taking a photo or, or shooting some video. It's aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and sensor size. And the A7S has a full frame sensor which, which uh, mimics old school 35 millimeter still film, um, like you'd have in your old SLR. So it's got a very large sensor. The A6000, A6400 have a crop sensor, which is, it's a big sensor, but it's a little bit smaller than, than a full frame sensor and therefore there's less surface area for it to, those sensors to collect light. Therefore the A7S is naturally going to do better in low light. When they designed that, the A7S, the, they did a whole lot of things to the sensor to maximize um, its effectiveness in low light. Now we're, you know, on up into 128,000. I think the next one's 160,000, then up into 200. It's just, the image is, is looking pretty terrible at this point. The A6000, it's, as I said, it's, Shoot all of this. I all of these I shot in 1080p, but the A6000, I, I've shot a little short film on it, and I love shooting on it. And I've I've used it a fair amount now. Um, a lot of my YouTube videos I have shot using the A6000. Um, so it's a really nice camera. I can't argue with that camera, especially for like 300 300 bucks. A6400 has some really nice slow motion. And it's the only only one of these cameras that shoots 4K or UHD internally. The A7S can shoot in UHD, but you have to have an external recorder. And we've topped out on the A7S at 409,600. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that comparison. Um, each camera has its strengths and its weaknesses. The A6000 and the A7S are pretty old, but uh, I think they're still very usable cameras at very affordable price points. So if you can pick up a good one that's used for a good price, um, I do not think you will be disappointed. If you like the video, please subscribe.